For double exposure, which is what this is, you can do two different subjects. In this instance, I took a photo of some, I panned some trees, and then I combined it in, uh, in camera with um, a photo of some nearby leaves. But I generally am doing two versions of one subject for a painterly look instead of two subjects combining. I'm doing two versions, one subject. So here is a rose at F13. It's a beautiful rose. So I took one shot of the rose as is, and then I totally defocused so that all I got was just orange color, and that's the effect. So I went from a straight shot to a very soft painterly look with the same camera, same setup, and everything. Here's another one where I did the same thing. So you can see the two of them together. You can see the effect of the double exposure. And you may prefer one or the other. That's fine. But it, veil of, that veil of color covers the whole, the whole photo. So here I combined this bud, which I thought was beautiful, but I wasn't crazy about the background. See how it's got darks and lights, and, and I wasn't crazy about that. And I saw this amazing plant next to it which is really busy, but when I defocused that plant, I got that. So when I combined them, I got the image on the left, which is much softer, more painterly, and then that was just another, um, another little branch on the plant. I did the same thing with this dogwood, one in focus, one totally defocused, and the same thing with these ferns. And then the Queen Anne's lace on the left, I did one in focus, one out. But for the calla lily, I wanted to try something different. So I did one in focus, and then instead of going totally out of focus, I just changed how close I was so that I made it a little bit bigger and let them be combined right in camera. Just a, a, a fun, fun technique. So you really need to check your manual to see if you can do in-camera multiple exposure. If not, you can do it in Photoshop, and we're going to be talking a little bit about that this afternoon. So I set my camera to multiple mode, five images for that. And here's the back of my camera. I've got it on continuous shooting. If you wanted to just set your camera so it only took one shot and that, and you went back to normal shooting, you can do that. My exposures are averaged. I usually choose an odd number, five or three are what I use most. You can save your source images if you wanted to play with them in Photoshop after. I don't do that. And I have it set for continuous. And all this is is just taking five, that might even have been seven, shots where I take a shot, move my camera a little bit, take a shot, move it, move it, and a circular pattern. And I did the same thing for this magnolia. For the, these Rudbeckia, and this is a little bit of more of a gentle image. I used a lens baby with probably only three turns of the camera. So I can go from this. These are Snapdragons before. You're looking for lots of color and shapes for this technique. And here's my multiple exposure of it. This is great when you have flowers that still have a lot of color, but they're not in great shape. They're not in great condition because you can't tell. Yes. How many times, or how many different variations of these things, perhaps, are you going through as you're trying these fun things? As far as? Oh, just the different multiple exposures, the, oh. are you, do you see the vision of what you want to create, or are you just playing? Um, generally, when I see something like this, I think multiple exposure. You know, it really depends on what I'm seeing. And a lot of this comes down to sometimes me being bored. My friends are already done. And I'm like, I'm, you know, my friends are not done, rather, and I'm done. And I'm like, eh, what am I going to do? I'll do some multiple exposure. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to keep myself entertained <laughs> some of the time. So, uh, yeah, sometimes I don't think of it ahead of time. And sometimes I do. This is just a straight shot of dogwood. And then a multiple exposure version. And another. And then I took this uh, one step further the last time I did it. I just started playing with, I did five exposures, but the last one I totally defocused. And so I ended up with a veil of color on top of my multiple exposure. So I did four of the turns, and then for the last shot, I just defocused. So there's that veil of color that I seem to be quite a fan of. 
Same thing with this shot, same technique. And that one as well. And not just flowers. These are stairs at the uh, Japanese gardens in Portland. I just rotated the camera for three. And here's the shot that I did at the Dunn Gardens. And I'd like to show you how I did that so you can watch me make a multiple exposure. I'm going to show you how I do multiple exposure in camera. The Canon 5D Mark III allows me to do that. You should check your manual and see if you can do it with your camera. If you can't, you can combine exposures in post-processing, which we'll be talking about later. Uh, the reason that I bought my 5D Mark III was because I had Nikon Envy, because Nikon has allowed you to do this for a while. So when I'm doing multiple exposure, I generally choose an odd number of exposures to combine. Three and five are what I used most often. And I choose a subject that has a lot of subject in a small area, a lot of color, a lot of shape, a lot of line to really get a painterly look. So I've chosen pansies to demo the technique for you today. And I'm gonna do that with five exposures. So what I'm going to do is set my focus point over to the right, a little bit off center, and focus on one pansy. And with each exposure, I'm going to tilt my camera slightly to the left. Click, click, click. Each time, rotating it a little bit. And you don't have to move your camera in a swirled pattern. You can move up and down, you can move sideways. That's totally up to you. But I think for the pansies, it will look really nice with a swirl of color. So I'm gonna do that now. And I did use autofocus for that. It worked well with this subject. If it's not working and you find that your camera's seeking, then go back to manual focus. But it worked perfectly here. I like the wows and the oohs and the ahs that I'm hearing from <laughs> Thank folks you over for here. <laughs> um, so once again, clarifying, tripod, not tripod for the multiple exposures. I'm not. If you did use a tripod, you would just have to loosen your lens collar so that you could get that motion. Great. And again, uh, from Lindsay, are you moving the camera horizontally or sort of in that circular motion? For the pansy shot, that was all circular, but you can move it horizontally. You can move it diagonally. That's totally up to you. Great. And Ramesh had asked, how do you calculate the multiple exposure? You were setting it on the back of your camera, right? That yes. has that feature? Yes. Right. Right on, the, right on the back of your camera, go in and, and set it up to, um, to the settings that you want. And so again, the question from Elizabeth Lovelace, how are you combining the images? The camera's doing it. Camera's doing camera's it. Doing it. Great. A question from a user, how many texture boards do you carry with you? You have about four or five there? Yeah, those are new and I've only had them a couple of weeks. So it, probably will depend on where I'm going and what I'm going to shoot. If I'm spending a whole day at a garden, I might be bringing more, but I do find lately that I'm bringing an extra gadget bag, <laughs> gadget bag with me um, with my clamps and, and my tripod and a couple of texture boards, but um, not, it, it, really, it really depends. And they're so light, they don't, they don't weigh anything. So I'd say on, um, if I was going to spend the morning at a garden, I'd probably bring four with me. That's going to give me eight different backgrounds. And you can do one board and leave it plain white. If you want a plain white background, you could just do, a, if you like black backgrounds, you could just do a black background as well. Great. I have a question about your texture board also. Yeah? Uh, I noticed you had it pretty close to the plant and you were still able to get a narrow enough depth of field. Um, I know that's because of your aperture, but it really seemed like you were really close right. to the plant. So Yeah, I, that was with the Lens Baby Velvet too. Oh, okay. As well. Okay. When you are taking those uh, multiple exposures, uh, are you considering any changes to the amount of light uh, that you're getting in the camera that is... Um... I didn't have to in that situation because the, there was a, the scene was pretty evenly lit. Question about your clamps. I noticed you have some apparatus back there. Right. Um, do you make these up or do you purchase these somewhere? No. Where do you, you get these? You can make them up. In my other class uh, in the art of flower photography, I do have um, one that I demoed that I made by hand. But um, 
but these are purchased clamps. And I, I generally take two with me so that if I have to hold a background with one and a diffuser or a reflector with the other, since I do shoot alone, that I can do both and attach them both to my tripod. Where, where do you get them? So, oh, you any camera store. Any oh, okay. camera store. Okay, camera store. Wimberley makes one, and then they, they have aftermarket ones uh, okay. at B&H, Adorama, Amazon. Okay, okay. I appreciate your craftsmanship. I mean, your craft is really yeah. great. It's refreshing not to have something that's right. uh, an application. Right. These, these are expensive. The one that, that I made by hand, I used these um, quick strips that I got at the Home Depot and some clamps at the dollar store and had my husband wire tie them on. They're not as stiff as this, um, but they'll do. They'll definitely do. And then they, they don't hold the weight that these do because they're not as stiff, but, um, but they're handy. They'll hold a diffuser, something light. All right, great. We have a couple more questions from folks at home. Uh, Janine Hubble had asked, can you use the tool effect without a lens hood? I don't, I don't use UV filters on my lenses, so I wouldn't want to put anything up close to my lens that might scratch it. So I would not. But perhaps you could create something could, that was could. holding it you, otherwise yeah, or could. what have you, yeah. DIY? I, I'm always using a lens hood just to protect my protect. lens anyway. So Great. if you have, a, like I said, a scalloped edge makes it a little bit, a little bit tougher to pull that tool evenly in, in front. Great. And C. Welsh Photo had asked, can you use fabric for a texture board, like a velvet yep. or something else? Yes, definitely, definitely. And I started before I came up with the idea of printing my textures, um, I was using fabric. Great. And just to clarify in some of the videos, folks were asking Christina Kay, how long is the lens that you used in these last couple of videos? It was my 180 millimeter 180. f3.5. Great, for the shoot through. Yeah, for the shooting through. And Linda B is asking, how large are those foam, foam boards again? Those are eight and a half by 11. Okay, great. Which is a, to... That's large enough for what I shoot. If you have a larger um, subject, then you might wanna go larger, but it's gonna be harder to hold with a clamp. So that works for me. Great. And one more clarification from Eduardo. The technique to shoot one image in focus and the other one out of focus, right. those were two separate images, right? Not yep. a multiple exposure. They were two separate images combined in my camera in multiple exposure. So I had the multiple exposure settings for two and then took one in focus, the next one defocused, and the camera combined them into one. Great. And if you wanted to do those, to have the camera save those images, it would also be handy because then you could go in and you could mask maybe some of that effect off of, of your flower so, or your subject. Great. And once again, can we clarify or talk about uh, who makes these clamps, even though there are uh, you know, different ones that you could use? Yeah. Um, I think Wimberley makes the, one, the ones that I have. Um, there's one called the Plamp. Then there's the stick, which has a, a stick that uh, goes into the ground and the clamp part comes out so you wouldn't have to um, attach it to your tripod. 